It's never easy to see your ex, especially when they're looking amazing and happier without you. And for Jose Mourinho, it's an inopportune time to bump into his old club, partly because it falls between important Europa League games against Anderlecht, one of two tickets to Champions League next season for Manchester United, but mostly because of their form at home. Yes, they're in the middle of a great unbeaten run, an impressive unbeaten run, but their home win percentage is the worst it's been for 43 years at Old Trafford. And, and the fans here at the Theatre of Dreams are accustomed to seeing dominance they're not seeing this year. So it creates a tactical dilemma for Mourinho, and he has to devise a game plan for the third time this season against Chelsea. It didn't work the two previous times, and it failed spectacularly in the reverse fixture at Stamford Bridge, and it culminated, if you remember, with Antonio Conte revving up the Chelsea fans and Jose Mourinho stomping over and whispering in his ear. We're not sure what he said. I promise you it wasn't sweet nothings, but, but if we're going to guess what he said, it was along the lines of, don't humiliate me, show some more respect. So this is the last chance in the third game now that Jose Mourinho has to get one over on his old club. And it creates for me what I like to call the Ego Cup final. Jose Mourinho's never going to want to lose this game. It's going to stop his unbeaten run. It's going to help Chelsea go towards the title. So for me, it's delicious drama, uh, Rebecca, and we're front row for it. These are star athletes that just captivated a nation, that, that captured everyone's heart. This is a World Cup winner who's having to stay in a room with bedbugs. It, it, it's absolutely ridiculous, and I hope her words uh, create a huge wave here that gets some change. This is becoming a, a real problem, the um, disrespectful, disdainful, demeaning way managers talk to reporters. Uh, I get it. You know, listen, it's difficult moments after a tough result to answer tough questions. But these journalists are paid to ask those tough questions. And these managers are paid an egregious amount more to answer them without crossing the line. David Moyes crossed the line, and it's who he crossed it with that's the bigger issue, the fact it was a female reporter. And if people don't think that's the issue, it's because they have the luxury of not knowing how ugly this profession can be for women. I'm Kyle Martino. When I traveled the world as a pro soccer player, I learned that the best action That's what I'm talking about. is outside the stadium. They are absolutely renowned worldwide. There's a famous story of the soccer player who's from Barcelona that, that now plays in England, who had his parents come once a month just to bring this Iberian ham. What I hope the show does is just empower people to say, it's okay that I don't speak the language, that I don't know what to wear, where to go, how to eat, and all the customs. That's okay, because that's when you have, that's when we've had the most fun or moments when we are so uncomfortable. Cat Daddy. Hi. Oh. What's up? Hey, how are you? Kristen. Hey, nice thank you, you so much for coming down to Booty Donut. Right. Let's take these outside. I'm like drooling all over the box. <laughs> I can't I'm wait to dive I'm surprised you still these. have some in there. Is that bacon on a donut? Yeah. Oh my God. All the coffee grounds just settle at the bottom. So don't just try to sling it back because you're going to get a mouthful of... There's mud under this river. There is. I'm so worried about being strong. Woo! You awake? That <laughs> is coffee. I'm on the hunt for the perfect Turkish gift for my wife, so I'm heading to Istanbul's famous Grand Bazaar. It's one of the oldest and largest covered markets in the world. And with over 5,000 shops, I know I can find anything here. It's overwhelming. I haven't done happy hour in a while, but my wife and I actually got in a fight about this the other day, where in this, in modern times, the, the, the roles shouldn't yeah. be stereotypical. Yeah. So the wife shouldn't be expected to stay home and be the babysitter. But if I'm left at home with Marlo, sometimes my wife comes back and there's, there's milk everywhere yeah. and Marlo's hair is sticking up and I shave the other side this of her head. And he and I are almost always together. But he still doesn't call me his girlfriend. Oh. Is, is his name Jordan Rogers? <laughs> oh. We're in the middle of the fantasy draft. You can't, can't, text, can't text in the middle of the fantasy draft. The winner of this heat is guaranteed a spot in tonight's final. They'll need to get all five team members on that 24-foot rope. And at that point, they can grab their team flag. Understand who these guys are. Mm -hmm. you know, who, who should we be, be paying attention to and why? And what's the big story? You know, a, a guy like Danny Cruz who grew up playing hockey and didn't start playing soccer until he was 15. That's a cool story. We gotta find a way to get uh -huh. that to the broadcast uh -huh. so you have a little more invested in watching this game. I do, I mean, the end of my career was so, um, was so tough because I had all these bad injuries mm -hmm. and, and I'd seen the track that I was on and, and, where, and where I'd sort of derailed and couldn't get back on. And it was just so frustrating because 
you know, when you're like in your late 30s, you have this tough decision where your mind still knows what you want to do and your body can't do it. To have that happen at like 27, 28, was kind of hard to stomach. So initially I wanted kind of nothing to do with it and didn't miss it. I think I'm starting to, I definitely have fallen in love with the game, watching it as a fan as I was when I was a kid and, and feel that buzz and that glow again. I've yet to really like fall in love with feeling that urge to, to go play a lot mm -hmm. more again. Get it? Now handle outside, there you go, straight up. Perfect. No whammies, no whammies. Going. Good. I'm no fisherman, but things aren't boating well for me right now. My guys look a little shrimpy. They look small, dude. <laughs> I think you're in trouble, dude. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> tiny. Is it not I big enough? I think he's in trouble. It's not big enough to keep. Oh, really? It's shorter than oh, the gauge, see? Is. Fred, I thought I, I told you to get the, give me the, the good trap that you already checked that had the biggest ones in it. Let me at least throw it back. Let me have a moment. Okay. <laughs> I'll be back for you next time, little guy. Meanwhile, Kristen has her eye on one of the big boys. Can I um, have my way with one of the lobsters? Oh, yeah. You trust me? Do I trust you? Yeah, you're not cutting me open with it. Kristen's tearing through that like a cave woman preparing a meal for her tribe. When it comes to lobster, I like a bib, a beer, and a pail of butter. And if she's doing what I think she's doing, I'm out. I only want to deal with lobsters after they're cooked. I didn't, you know. Okay, so typically, like, raw lobsters are a little bit hard to get out of the shell, so we're just gonna finagle it out. Can't we just get a slice of pizza? What do I do? What do you want me to do with that? Eat it. Fred, Fred, you you're not some? getting out of this, buddy. <laughs> Get in there. It's actually really good. Good, right? Oh, we got Popularity, it. FC Barcelona is also one of the most successful teams on the planet. This year alone, they made history by winning three major championships. Now we are arriving to... to to Can't you just tell that that's an important trophy? Yes. All right, I'm geeking out now. Now I'm this really geeking out. <laughs> no, no, no. This is the Holy Grail. One of the most iconic soccer photos is a captain lifting that trophy right there with his team behind him. That is a chill moment. Many great teams never get to put their hands on a trophy like that, and Barcelona's been able to do it five times. Have you ever held one? No. No? I think we should offer him the opportunity, <laughs> no? I think yes. so, too. <laughs> so, what? Uh, Jordi, so my, I ask my colleague to open this, please. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Let I'm him. nervous. <laughs> I'm Don't nervous. drop it. Don't drop it. Don't look like Sergio Ramos, eh? Oh. That feels good. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No, look at, look at his I'm oh, my, yeah. Your hairs are sticking up. Look at yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Outside of the Barca organization, only five people in the world have laid their hands on this cup. I'm number six. This is a moment I will take with me forever. That was incredible. Oh. Come here. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> By the way, there's a little kid here that is 100,000 times better than I am. That's humbling. Oh, that one? All right, can you show me how to do it, buddy? Yeah. How do you drop in? I do it like this. OK. <laughs> how easy did that look? All right. Feeling good? Oh! Two. What did I do wrong? Do it like this. OK, OK. So stay on the board. Yeah. Stay on the board. All right, this is where the competitor is coming out, and now I'm going to start to get really pissed off. My mentor, my spirit animal. What was your name? Maverick. Maverick, of course it's Maverick. I'll be your goose, buddy. 